Hello everyone, I'm Li Xinyuan, a Huawei instructor. Last class, we talked about WLAN security. In this class, we will discuss the specific business configuration of WLAN. In WLAN business configuration, there is an important concept, which is templates. We set various types of templates for different functions and features. These templates can be referenced to each other. This way, it's easy for us to set different characteristics for WLAN, such as security features, SSIDs, and other attributes. Our configuration is done via CLI commands and through a web interface. First, let's talk about configuring WLAN services using the CLI. In this class, we will first discuss the configuration process of WLAN services. Then we will demonstrate basic configuration of WLAN using command line. Let's look at the configuration process. Our configuration process mainly consists of three steps. First step, AP goes online. This includes creating an AP group, configuring network interconnectivity, and setting AC system parameters. Then the second process is configuring templates. These templates are very important. We have an SSID template, which is the network signal that our users find. That name is the SSID. It supports many different features. Then there is the security template, because we need to enter a password when configuring. When we connect to Wi-Fi, we need to enter a password. This step is configured in the security template. Last lesson, we talked about some different security strategies. These security strategies can be used in the security template. The final step is configuring the VAP template. After configuring the template, we need to bind the templates. Bind the SSID template and security template in the VAP template. Then bind the VAP template to the AP or AP group. Thus, our WLAN service can be activated. First, let's take a look at the specific process. The first step is AP online. The purpose of using WLAN is to allow users to access the network. So first, we need to configure network interconnectivity. Our APs and users can automatically obtain a DHCP address during use. Therefore, we must configure DHCP services. In our practice, we can set up the AC device as a DHCP server, or we can use our core switch as the DHCP server. Of course, the network between the AP and the DHCP server must be interconnected. And the network between AP and AC also definitely needs to be interconnected. These are explained separately because AC is not necessarily the DHCP server. After network interconnectivity is complete, we need to create an AP group. Why create an AP group? Because we might not have only one AP in a WLAN network. And if we configure these APs one by one, it would take a lot of time. So by creating an AP group, we can apply some settings directly to the AP group, which saves our configuration time. The third step is configuring the country code for the AC. Because each country's regulation of radio waves differs, we need to configure different country codes, which will support different parameters. The next step is to configure the source interface or source address which means establishing a tunnel with the AP. In use, our WLAN utilizes a CAPWAP tunnel, and our APs must also comply with the management of the AC. In this case, we definitely need to establish a source address. The next step is to configure automatic upgrades when APs go online, which is an optional configuration. Then, the next step is to add AP devices. There are three ways to add AP devices. Offline import of APs, automatic discovery of APs, and manual confirmation of APs from the unauthenticated list. In our experiments, we will show you how to add APs. After completing the previous steps, next, we need to configure some templates. These templates configure various functions of WLAN and can be switched according to our needs. First, we can see many templates can be imported into APs or AP groups. This means our templates are set by APs or AP groups to manage the characteristics of our APs or AP groups. 
As for the pre-management template, as I've already mentioned, each country has different country codes. Then the second one is the radio frequency template. The RF template is used to optimize our radio frequency parameters, to optimize some parameters of our radio. In our configuration, the VAP template is a very important part. In the VAP template, we need to reference the SSID, security templates, and authentication templates. In our experiments, I will show you how to configure these templates, how to reference them. If we have further advanced needs, we can also have other templates. Each template corresponds to different functions. For APs and AP groups, we can also adjust their radio frequency parameters, such as frequency bands, channels, and transmission power all of which can be modified. If our working frequency bands are insufficient, we can also bundle two frequency bands together. These are some of the settings for AP groups, which can utilize templates. Next, let's look at the VAP template. This VAP template is an important focus this time. Firstly, VAP templates need to be bound to APs or AP groups. Let's see what's inside a VAP template. First is the SSID template. The wireless signal name that users search for is the SSID. SSID can have many different features. For example, if the user limit under this SSID is reached, we can choose to hide it. Similar to this kind, we support many different features. Second, the security template. We provided detailed information in the last session. We have many different security strategies, which are configured in the security template, then referenced in the VAP template, and the VAP template is bound to the AP. Our AP will then utilize these security strategies. Third, the data forwarding method. We have two methods, tunnel forwarding and direct forwarding. Another important aspect is configuring the service VLAN. Within the VAP template, our VAP sends Layer 2 data packets to the AP that carry the service VLAN. We must configure the correct service VLAN, then our services can be properly activated. Next, let's look at the command line. If our AC serves as the DHCP server, we need to configure the option 43 field. How do we configure the option 43 field? Here option, and then you can fill in 43. If needed later, we can also fill in this sub-option. If anyone is interested, you can refer to our product documentation, which includes some detailed instructions. I won't go into too much detail here. In the later experiments, we will show how the option 43 field is used. Then, we also need to establish a domain management template and configure the country code. How to create it? First, enter the WLAN protocol view. Then use this keyword, regulatory domain profile name, which is our domain management template. Then it's very important, we need to enter the country code. China's country code is CN. After having the domain management template, we need to create an AP group, so we can manage many APs uniformly. After creating the AP group, we need to bind our regulatory domain profile with the AP group, which happens at this step. Within the AP group, we import the regulatory domain profile. Next, we need to configure the source interface, because when using AC with AP, we need to use the CAPWAP tunnel. So here we need to configure the CAPWAP source interface. Here we can use a loopback interface or a VLANIF interface, both of which are logical interfaces. Alternatively, we can directly set the source address of the AC, simply using an IP address. This is about configuring the source interface and source address. Next, we need to add the AP devices to our AC. Here we have three authentication methods, MAC address authentication, SN authentication, or no authentication. Our switch method is MAC address authentication. If it's no authentication, all APs will be managed by the AC, but this method is not secure. Therefore, in normal use, we still need MAC address authentication or SN code authentication. Now, let's see how to add our AP devices in line. First, under the WLAN device section, we input the keyword API ID, which is assigning a sequence number to the AP, 
Here's the sequence number. Then we can add a type ID, AP type, followed by our AP's MAC address or SN code. Thus, after adding this AP now, we can name the AP. If we don't name it, the system can name it for us. Now that an AP has been added. But as we mentioned about AP groups, we still need to add the AP into an AP group. After selecting an AP, use this command, AP group, to add the AP to the AP group. In this way, we can manage several different APs uniformly. Finally, we usually use display AP all to see all online APs to check if these APs are in normal mode. Then, after the AP goes online, we need to start creating a VAP template. We know that our APs or AP groups ultimately need to be bound to a VAP template. Let's see how to create a VAP template. Still under the WLAN view, first use the command VAP profile name, then enter a profile name we define to create a template. In the template, we can choose whether our data is directly forwarded or tunneled. Then the second step is to configure the service VLAN, which is very important, to ensure the service VLAN is configured. After configuring the service VLAN, we also need the security template and SSID template. First, look at the security template. Here, we first need to create a security template. As we discussed in the WLAN security session, I have already explained how to configure under the security template. We have OpenWEP and also WPA and WPA2. We need to choose one under the security template. After it's created, we need to introduce this security template into the VAP. In this way, the VAP is bound to the security template. The next step is to configure the SSID template. The SSID template supports many features. First, let's see how to create an SSID template. Under WLAN settings, use SSID profile name followed by a name to create an SSID template. Here, we can set the name of an SSID. This SSID is what we see when searching for wireless signals. When we search for wireless networks, it's the name we find. After it's created, we can introduce the SSID template into the VAP template. Now the VAP template has been created. We need to bind the VAP template with the AP group. First, enter the AP group, then bind the VAP template. Of course, the radio frequency also needs to be bound. After binding is successful, we can check the VAP information. We use display VAP, then follow with AP group. Of course, if we want, we can also follow with other parameters or directly use display VAP all, then all parameters will be displayed. That concludes session 10 on how to configure a WLAN. Next lesson, we will look at specific applications.